Hello, good day everyone. I hope your family is still safe and healthy and I hope you're still doing well. Uh, I'll just introduce again myself. I am Engineer Adams Race Agenesia, a licensed civil engineer, a faculty member, a BSCA graduate, and a graduate student at University of the Philippines, Diliman. So this is my email, adamsresgenesia at gmail.com. So you can contact me on this email if you have any concern or you can just search my name on Facebook or Messenger. If you have any concern, you have any comments or uh, violent reactions, suggestions, etc. So our subjects, our subject is still mechanics of deformable bodies, C009. A uh, little bit of disclaimer, all photos, problems, etc. you will see on this presentation uh, is not owned by the instructor. So credit goes to the respective owners. And please, please do not disseminate or distribute this PowerPoint presentation without my consent. So the references that I have used in this presentation is still Engineering Mechanics Statics by Hebeler, still Vector Mechanics for Engineer by Weir Johnson at et al. And for some images, I use Google. And for some content, I use Matrix Analysis of Structures by Aslam Kasimali. And the Book of Craig. Engineering Mechanics, Statics for some sample problem and problem set. So previously, recap lang natin, summary of our previous discussion. Previously, we have started about, uh, uh, we have found out that analysis of structure is the process by which we determine how the loads applied to a structure are distributed throughout the structure or sa mindalik salita na lang, analysis, is, uh, analysis of structure is finding out the individual contribution of each member or each part of a structure in resisting the load it supports. So, yan yung natutunan natin last discussion. Another thing na natutunan natin last discussion ay yung common types of loading. Since alam natin na ang structure ay nagsusupport ng loads, it's worthy to know the common types of loading that our structure will encounter in its lifespan. So, the common uh, type of loads that we have uh, studied previously are point load or concentrated load, uniform load or uniformly distributed load, or minsan tiyatawag na lang din tong rectangular load, triangular load or linearly varying distributed load, or in general, we have studied about distributed load with its name come from shape. For example, yung inaral natin na sample problem before, yung ang shape ng distributed load ay parabola. So, that distributed load is called parabolic distributed load where, wherein yung name niya ay nanggaling dun sa shape ng no? distributed load. Lastly, na inaral natin last meeting, previous discussion, which is yung pinaka-important, is yung technique sa pagkuha ng resultant ng any distributed load. So, we have found out na yung resultant pala ng any distributed load ay equal lang sa area ng pressure diagram treated as a geometric shape. And, it, and this resultant is acting on the centroid of that geometric shape. Or in the case na kung saan yung pressure diagram is medyo three-dimensional, acting on a uh, three-dimensional body, so, instead of area, kukunin natin ay volume ng no? pressure diagram treated as a geometric shape. And that volume will also equal to the resultant of those distributed loading. And that resultant is acting, hindi na sa centroid, kasi yung centroid sa area yun, sa area lang yun eh. So, yung resultant na yun will act on the center of gravity of that volume. So, yun yung inaral natin nung previous discussion. So now, for this discussion, our goal for this discussion, una, is to understand the idealizations made when analyzing a structure. So, pag nag-analyze tayo ng structure, hindi lang agad-agad nakakita tayo ng structure, i-analyze na natin. 
So, meron tayong mga ginagawang idealizations kung saan yung uh, so, uh, sophisticated details ng isang structure ay dinidisregard na natin or dinidiscard kasi hindi naman natin siya kailangan para fully ma-analyze yung structure. So, yun yung aarali natin for this goal. Second goal is to be familiar with the different types of connections. So, ano na ba yung mga different types of connection and paano mo ba matidifferentiate from yung one connection from the other. Lastly, ang goal natin for this meeting is to be familiar with the different classification of frame structure. So, yung iba't ibang classification ng frame structure na yan is uh, medyo connected dito sa dalawang naunang topic. So, dapat alam muna natin yung different types of connection at yung idealization when analyzing para maunawa natin ano ba yung different classification of a frame structure. Although, yun nga, medyo ay limit lang yung classification sa frame structure kasi meron tinatawag na surface structure. Pero, hindi natin aralit na yun. Dito lang tayo sa frame structure kasi most of the structure naman na inaaral natin sa civil engineering, puro naman frame structure. So, nilimit ko na lang yung pag-aaral natin dun sa mga frame structure. <coughs> so, yun, let's start for our first goal to understand the idealizations made when analyzing a structure. Say, for, for example, I have here a structure, actually a real structure. So, this structure is, again, a uh, railroad bridge kung saan bridge siya na instead of vehicles yung dumadaan sa kanya ang dumadaan sa kanya ay uh, mga train yan at nakakita kayo ng gantong rail structures actual tapos medyo pansinin nyo yung banda dito sa isang dulo nya yung parang yung isang part na nagsusuporta dun sa structure medyo pag tinignan nyo yan sometimes ang itsura nyan ay parang ganito or parang ganito Actually, may tawag dyan sa ganyan. Ang tawag dyan ay roller support or roller connection. Ayan yung tawag dyan sa ganyang, sa ganyang itsura ng support na may kita nyo sometimes sa isang bridge. Nandito yan, usually sa dulo, sa dulong bridge. Ayan yung sumusuporta, kumbaga, dun sa structure siya yung nagtatala dun. <coughs> sa kabilang end naman, minsan, may kita nyo naman, is parang ganito. So, ang tawag naman dyan ay hinge, hinge support or hinge connection. Pag tinignan nyo yan, pag nakakita kayo ng ganitong bridge, yun sa makikita nyo, yung isang, yung isang end nya na nagsusupport din sa bridge na yun, parang ganito yung itsura nya. So, ang tawag nga dyan ay hinge support. <coughs> Ito, yung mga connection nitong members <coughs> nung bridge, say for example yan, pag tinignan nyo yan, zoom in natin, Ang itsura niyan minsan is ganito. So, ito yung mga members ng structure and they are connected using this what we call gasset plate. Tawag dito gasset plate. Tapos, nakakonect yung gasset plate dun sa mga members using bolts or rivets. Or minsan naman, may kita mo, ang tawag dyan sa ganyang joint pala ay uh, rigid joint. Rigid joint na tawag dyan. Minsan, yung connection na to, ng mga bridge, uh, members ng bridge, minsan hindi ganito eh. Minsan na may kita mo parang ganito yung tsura nya. Ayan. So, ang tawag naman dyan ay, kung ito kanina ay rigid joint, ito ang tawag naman dyan ay <coughs> pin joint. Ayan. So, ano lang yan. Yan yung mga usually nakikita nyo sa isang real structure. Now, say for example, I want to find out what is the contribution of this particular member of the structure in supporting the railway. Kunyari, gusto ko malaman ano ba yung force na nag-a-act nag dito sa particular member na to. How do I find out that particular force acting on this member? So, based on the previous discussion, we need to analyze the structure. We need to analyze the structure. Pero, the question is, do we really need this much detail? Do we really need to know this 
much detail in order for us to fully analyze this structure. Kailangan ba talaga alam natin kung ano yung itsura nitong roller, alam natin yung itsura nitong hinge, or nung rigid joint, or pin joint. Dapat ba alam natin kung ano yung size nitong gasset plate na to, or ano yung diameter nitong pin na to, or ilang volts yung nakakabit dito sa hinge, or ano ba talaga yung itsura ng roller, is this is this like this or like this? Kailangan ba talaga natin alam pa natin yung mga detail na yan para lang ma-analyze natin yung structure, para lang mahanap natin yung force acting on this member. Kailangan ba natin malaman pa yan yung mga hitsura ng kada member na yan and ano yung dimension nila? Do we really need to know those much detail, those sophisticated detail in order for us to analyze the structure? So actually, hindi natin kailangan yun. Hindi natin kailangan Usually, yung ganyan, karaming detail. Hindi naman natin kailangan yan yan. Kaya hindi naman natin kailangan yan sa pag-analyze no? structure. So, usually naman, kailangan lang natin sa uh, pag-analyze ng structure is malaman lang natin kung anong klaseng joint ba to or anong klaseng support yung nag or nakalagay dito or ano ba yung length or haba ng kada member, usually yun lang naman yung kailangan natin for us to be able to analyze the structure. So, ibig sabihin lang nun, instead of uh, having this much detail para i-analyze yung structure, we, we usually discard those much detail na hindi naman kailangan para ma-analyze natin yung structure. Hindi discard na natin yung mismong itsura ng joint, kung ano bang itsura ng gasset plate na nakakonect yan, or kung may gasset plate ba, or kung ano mang diameter yan, or kung ano ba talaga yung itsura ng roller. Actually, discard na natin yan, kasi hindi naman natin kailangan ng ganyang karaming or kaso-sophisticated na detail. So, pag discard natin yan, usually, yung lalabas na structure, kapag discard natin yung mga kumbaga unneeded or unnecessary detail, ang lalabas na structure doon ay tinatawag na analytical model. So, what is an analytical model? Analytical model is, is, is an idealized, idealized representation through line diagram of a real structure for the purpose of analysis. So, kung gusto lang naman talaga natin i-analyze yung structure, gusto lang natin malaman yung force dito, hindi na natin kailangan malaman yung mga sophisticated detail na nakikita nyo ngayon. Ayan, di natin kailangan malaman yan. Kailangan lang natin is yung tiyatawag na idealized representation na tong uh, real structure para ma-analyze natin yung structure na yan. So, ang objective natin, kaya natin siya ina-idealize is to simplify the analysis of a complicated structure by discarding much of the detail. Yan guys, yan sabi ko, uh, Hindi naman natin kailangan malaman masyado ano ba yung about sa connection or sa member, ano ba yung itsura ng connection niya, ganito ba or ganito, ilan bang volts yan or ano bang diameter na to, or ano ba yung pinaka ng member niya, may ganun ganun ba, may parang may mga nakadiagonal pa ganun ganun. Hindi naman natin yan kailangan sa, para ma-analyze natin yung structure. So usually, for an idealist representation, we usually discard those unnecessary details kasi nga, wala naman niya masyadong effect dun sa pag-aaral natin or sa pag-analyze natin no structure. Pero still, syempre, dapat yung matitira na idealization dapat as much as possible uh, nare-represent niya pa rin yung totoong structure as accurately as practically possible. Nang sa ganun, makuha pa rin natin yung mga details na gusto natin makuha. For example, nga yung force na nag dito. So, paano ba yung line diagram? So, sabi ko nga kanina, pag i-analyze natin tong structure na to, isa sa mga kailangan lang naman natin is ano ba yung haba ng kada member? Hindi naman natin kailangan malaman. Ano ba yung mismo itsura ng member? Yan. Ano ba yung dimension ng member na yan? Ang kailangan lang natin, yung haba niya. Kumbaga, kailangan malaman lang natin ano ba yung haba nito, nito, neto, 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 and so on. So, kung ganun lang naman pala yung kailangan natin. So, pwede instead of this, pwede ang ilagay na lang natin is something like this. Yan. Kung ano yung haba nito, 
that length will be represented by this line. And kung ano yung haba nito, can be represented by this line. Haba nito, can be represented by this line, this line, this line, this line, this line. So, technically, since ang kailangan lang naman natin is yung haba or length of kada member, and hindi na yung mismo itsura ng member, or kung ano ba yung dimension ng member, we can represent the whole structure and its parts, its members, using what we call line diagram. So, ang tawag dito sa nabuo natin ay line diagram. So, instead of having this very sophisticated detail, sobra-sobra yung detail na nandyan, hindi naman natin kailangan yung mga detail na nakikita nyo dyan sa structure na yan para ma-analyze yung structure, pwede na natin yung i-disregard. So, tanggalin na natin yan. Sapat na to. Kumbaga, ito yung tinatawag na <coughs> idealization natin ng structure. So, yung dito naman sa end na to, instead of having this much detail, hindi naman natin kailangan malaman kung ano ba talaga yung tsura ng roller support dito, kung ganito ba or ganito. Ang kailangan lang natin malaman is kung ano ba yung type ng support dito, which is yung roller na. So, as long as nalalaman natin kung ano yung support niya dyan, uh, that is already enough, more than enough para ma-analyze natin yung structure. So, instead of having this much detail, para lang mapakita na ang support dito ay roller, why not represent na lang natin for using a simple drawing like this. Usually, this is the representation of roller support. So, instead of having this much detail, hindi mo natin kailangan malaman kung ano ba talaga yung tura ng roller support dyan, ganito ba or ganito. So, pwede tanggalin na natin yan, ay palit na lang natin is this. Kasi nga, ang kailangan lang naman natin is kung ano bang support dito. Again, as long as we know what kind of support is, uh, is uh, nag-exist dito, then it is already more than enough for us to be able to analyze the structure. Ganun din dito sa kabilang end. Hindi <coughs> naman natin kailangan malaman ilang volts ba yan, ano bang size nitong uh, pin na to na nakapasok dyan sa hinge, hindi natin kailangan malam ano ba yung dimension ng mismong hinge na yan na nag exist dito. We don't need those much detail. Ang kailangan lang natin malaman is yung support niya dito is hinge. So, uh, ibig sabihin lang nun, as long as napapakita natin na ang support niya dito ay hinge, therefore, it is already more than enough for us to be able to analyze the structure. So, usually, ang ng, representation ng hinge or idealization ng hinge is something like this. So, instead of having that with those much detail, with those unnecessary details, pwede natin tanggalin yan, palitan na lang natin ng ganitong representation. Lastly is yung mga connection ng bawat member ng structure. Instead of having this sophisticated detail para mapakita yung connection ng bawat member sa isa't isa, why not using, i-use na lang natin yung ganitong klaseng representation. Itong pinapakita ko ngayong representation, this is the idealization or representation ng isang rigid joint. So, parang ano lang siya. Parang siyang shade. That uh, circle na may shade sa loob. So, instead of having this much detail, pwede natin tanggalin yan para mapakita natin na ang joint na to ay rigid joint. Instead of having that para lang mapakita na ang joint na to ay rigid joint, eh, ang pwede na lang natin gawin is i-represent na lang natin siya using this sim <coughs> using this symbol. Or again, minsan nga, sabi ko nga, <coughs> yung joint is minsan pin joint. So, ganito yung tura niya. So, ang representation nitong pin joint is usually something like this. So, again, if yung joint naman is pin joint, hindi mo kailangan ilagay yung ganitong sophisticated na drawing or detail. Hindi mo na kailangan ilagay exactly what is this diameter, yung pin. Kailangan mo lang is ma-represent or mapakita na ang joint ay pin joint. So, instead of having that, having that pwede mo na tanggalin, represent mo na lang siya as something like this, this idealization. So, yung nabuo natin na yan, yan yung tinatawag na idealized structure. Ibig sabihin ng idealized structure, yung information na nakikita nyo dyan, yung mga details na nakikita nyo dyan, yan lang yung kailangan natin for us to be able to fully analyze the structure. Yan lang yung mga details na kailangan natin for us to know the particular force acting on this member, this member, and so on.